If we had to sum up the one thing that was truly solidified for us this year, it would definitely be the saying, life really does come at you fast. If you've been following along on our journey, you already know that Lawrence and I embarked on our dream trip around the world on March 31st, 2021. A dream that had been in the works for more than two years. So when the global crisis hit, we were devastated. Selling our home, cars, living on the strictest budget we could muster, moving back in with family members. They were all sacrifices that we'd made for two years to make our dreams come true. We felt and still feel as though this trip was about more than us. We wanted to set an example that people like us deserve this kind of lifestyle too. And as one of our favorite YouTubers, Belief in Fatherhood says, we wanted to be the proof. Against the odds and quite a few people's recommendations, we decided to go anyway. There were people concerned for our safety and rightfully so. And honestly, we were concerned about the lives and safeties of others while traveling. But what this time period also taught us is that life is short and you only get one chance to live it. Now, if you made it this far, I'm sure you know how this part of the story goes. We booked a one-way flight to Thailand, followed all the protocols to safely travel and be granted in entry into the country including a 10-day quarantine in a tiny hotel room with horrible food, which honestly made us a little crazy. Then proceeded to, as safely as possible, enjoy as much as we could of this new place we had never seen anything like before. We saw temples, smiling local faces. We ate an abundance of delicious food, spent time with elephants, explored local markets, drank way too many smoothies, went on boat rides, went to an amazing cooking class, explored all the beaches, cities, islands we could safely see in a three month span. But then of course, something happened. On May 31st, Deanna experienced one of the worst bouts of headache, dizziness, sight loss, and hearing loss that she had ever been through. For the two weeks that preceded this event, we had been treating her with what we thought was just a severe case of migraines, but it turned out it was worse than we expected. After visiting an amazing clinic in Chiang Mai and receiving many tests, Diana was informed by doctors that she had a brain tumor in a very sensitive part of her brain. She was informed that this was most likely the cause of the symptoms that she had been experiencing. Our next step, according to the doctors, was to allow them to go inside her brain to test the tissue to find out exactly what it was. It's not the kind of video we usually make, but here we are. So to make a long story short, for like the last three weeks, I've been suffering from like really severe headaches that just, it's like it just pounds. It causes me to have blurred vision and um, dizziness. And you know, I usually just have to sit down, lay down, and let it do its thing, run its course, take some ibuprofen. So, Lawrence has been trying to get me to go to the doctor for a while now. So, now that we're here in Chiang Mai, I finally went to the doctor two days ago. And uh, the doctor suggested that I get an MRI. So, I did. And while I was in the machine, the doctor came over to me and said that. They had seen something on my brain, so I was going to have to go back into the MRI machine for an extra 30 minutes. And of course, I automatically thought the worst, started crying for the last 30 minutes of me in the MRI machine. Everybody is so confused, like, oh, is your IV hurting? Like, no, you just told me you saw something on my brain, so. Yeah. One thing I'll say about the doctors here in Thailand are that they're very straightforward. So if you're looking for some... They're very blunt. And I, I think sometimes that bluntness, it, it just... It's just shocking. Yeah. Like, it's not mean. No one's mean. No one has been, you know, not helpful or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. super straight to the point, And uh, they're not sugarcoating anything for you. So, you know, Lawrence... Well, I mostly was like very upset about that yesterday and we had to go back to the doctor again today and we were hoping that when we went they were going to say everything was okay but unfortunately that's not what we were told. We were told that I have a tumor on the left side of my brain and it's like uh, two to three centimeters which is fairly small and that 
no, I mean, no one says that it's cancerous. It may be benign. We don't know, but it's just scary. So we're both a little scared about that right now. Yeah. I mean, contrary to Lawrence's smile. I don't know. I think I've been like crying a lot today and it's very unnatural of me to, I don't know, this is just, this is kind of awkward, um, but we felt like we should at least document this process um, and just just share it with you guys just so you know like what we're going through right now. Um, but yeah. So I have to go back tomorrow for a follow another follow-up appointment with a neurosurgeon to talk about what he pretty much thinks of the tumor and whether or not we should get it removed or what to do about it so that's all we know right now yep. it sucks i'm happy that we're here because if we were at home back in america i probably would have never went and got it checked out until it was way more serious because when I'm at home, you know, you're just like, oh, I'll be fine. Take some medicine. I don't like going to the doctors and stuff. But here, I think the heat combined with all the things that I was having just makes everything worse. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't want to be like on the back of a motorbike, get dizzy, faint, and then something. So, yeah. I don't want it to stop our plans or hinder us from this is not how I expected this to go. I mean, I just thought they were going to be like, you're fine. Like, everyone always... No one ever finds anything when I go to the doctor. Yeah. This is just a... Uh, it was just... It, it didn't feel real, honestly. When we were sitting there and the guy, like, started showing us the scans and just going through it. Um, it just, I don't know, he just seemed like super calm. You I know, mean, just, he has to be. Yeah, I guess he's a doctor, like he goes through this all the time. Um, but it was yeah. funny though when he like oh, yeah, he, put his hand on my put, leg. <laughs> he saw the other crying. Like, it's okay. So he's okay but. He just like hold my leg like this. Yeah. He left his hand there. <laughs> I saw, I saw. Yeah. But, I was like, how comforting. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're just trying to stay positive. Um, and tomorrow when we go, we'll actually get more details as into like what to do next um from the sounds of it like when i asked him questions about it he said like this is this is very early on so it's good that we came in and we found it um they won't know if it's cancerous or anything unless they actually get tissue from the tumor so i mean more than likely they're gonna have to go through my skull to get it out which makes me very nervous but again, like Lauren said, it's only two to three centimeters, so it's not like they'd have to like open up my entire skull just. Yeah, it's like the size of a, a, a peanut, I think. Very Which small. is still freaking scary, though. Yeah. I mean. I'm just I'm just happy that day that we went and we actually found it. Um, like you said, like if we were back in the states, like we would have been very complacent, you know, going about our day, and it might have gotten to a point like where it was actually a lot worse. So. Everything happens for a reason. Maybe this is why we even came to Thailand for, in the first place. Um, it's been very cost, uh, I mean, cost affor affordable. It's been very affordable to get all these tests. We've been paying everything out of pocket. And I know for Thai people, that's not affordable. But for us coming from the States, it's very affordable to get these tests and stuff done. So and go to all these doctor's appointments. The doctor's appointment, the regular doctor's appointment was about 20 US dollars, mm -hmm. which that would have been so much money just for a doctor to even sneeze in your direction in America yeah. would have cost like $300. As you can imagine, this was one of the scariest days of our lives. For the next few days, we cried, hugged, ate delicious food, cried some more, and then came up with a game plan. All right, back again with another update. So we went back to the medical center today to meet with the neurosurgeon. Pretty much from what I understand, he wants to stick a needle through my skull and into my brain to collect tissue from the tumor that I have in my brain, 
but it's really hard to ask questions and to get answers to my questions because of the language barrier sometimes he doesn't understand what i'm saying and sometimes i don't understand what he's saying so seeming like we're gonna have to go home for a little bit to get a second opinion and just so we can understand everything that's going on which really sucks because i really don't want to go home yeah like diana said like the the language barrier it's kind of hard to like understand um or get answers to questions like i felt like when i was asking questions i had to like ask, ask like very simple questions um otherwise it would confuse him and i think diana asked him you asked him one question and he just said yes yeah oh yeah she asked him like I, what what happens like if she doesn't get the surgery like if she just lets it lets it be and he, she was she, like she said yeah and then i was like okay i guess we have to get the sample done and we just feel more comfortable doing it in the states where we can actually understand everything that's going on um we did look up um like top hospitals apparently bangkok has like one of the best international hospitals but we don't we don't want to risk going there and then having to deal with the same thing like communication barriers barrier. yeah so so yeah um i'm not scared or fearful or anything because i don't live in fear i live in faith However, it's just a bit shocking and disappointing mm -hmm. that I we have to go home. Like when you embarked on your full time travel journey for one year, you are pretty certain that the only concerns you're gonna have is like your suitcase being overweight or your luggage not showing up or you know, I just wanna worry about those minuscule things. I didn't know that I would have to worry about having a brain tumor. Yeah. So life comes at you fast so yeah so right now we're just been chilling. crying both of us and we're tired of it crying but hey I'm trying to make the a, a bad situation turn into a less bad situation <laughs> with humor I'm hoping that the there is really no tumor and that they just want to experiment on me because my hair is so cool and they never got to touch a piece of a brain from a person whose hair looked this cool. So, yeah, but or we'll definitely keep you updated. Or maybe the machine was dirty. <laughs> there's like a little tiny speck. Or maybe I moved right when they took that picture. But anyway, I'll keep you updated. If we were going to have to get major surgeries and go through this health journey, we needed to be home, surrounded by the people who loved us the most. Since being home, life for us has been a whirlwind to say the least. After returning to the terrible US healthcare system and fighting for almost two months to be seen by the appropriate doctors, we finally got the care we needed and deserved. Warning, the events that follow are kind of sad. So how do you feel? This is for a future scared. record. Scared? Why are you scared? Because they're about to open up my skull and stab my brain. Everything's gonna be okay though. And I got two chins. <laughs> You don't have two chins. 
I love you, Lawrence. I love you too. You're gonna be very high when you get out of there. It's okay. It's okay. This is my very last time taking chemo pills for this phase and tomorrow is my last day of radiation and I'm really excited and I could cry. I might cry actually. Sorry, I'm not gonna cry. You can cry. Lawrence gives me my pills every day. He has to wear these gloves. I'm recording it in the mirror. It's <laughs> <laughs> the last one. Lots of extras. They said I can use them in the second phase, but at least I get one month off. So. What's your message? My message is I'm finally free. <laughs> 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 just mm. kidding. Am I supposed to say something inspirational? I know. Just talk to your future self. You made it. Even though you were mean sometimes, for the most part, I would say you did a really, really good job being happy, being positive, being grounded, and making sure that you were healthy and happy. And you glorified God through everything. And, and I'm proud of you. Passion for cooking. I did not. But I'm kind of good, low key good at it. <laughs> so, you did it. And you made it. And it's only up from here. And your cheeks will go down after you finish taking all the medications. Alright, time for bed. Put your bottom on. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Last day. <laughs> that's cool. That's and this is the mask that's been tormenting me. I will show you guys later. All right, enough of the sad talk. Let's get back to what we really came here for. Yes, I may be a little under the weather now, but I definitely don't plan to stay down forever. The God I serve has done way more with way less, and I'm expecting him to do the same for me. For now, we are back home, and because of my immune system, international travel is not in the cards for me. But travel is what makes our hearts smile the most. And this situation we are in honestly puts a damper on that smile. So of course we did something crazy. Meet our brand new 2021 Ram Pro Master. She has absolutely no character yet, so she doesn't have a name, but we are taking suggestions in the comments down below. 
Our plan for No Name is to convert her into a camper van that will allow us to safely continue to travel the U.S. after my treatments have been completed and I am strong enough again. If you are new to van life, check out some of these vets. But be warned that van life sinkhole is hard to get out of once you fall in. Life for us is a little different at the moment, and that's okay. We refuse to let our circumstances define us and take over our lives. If you made it this far, thank you so much for doing life with us. Stay tuned for Van Life updates in the future.